Welcome to Inside Games Digest, the only show brave enough to ask the tough question, did Microsoft actually steal Redfall from Sony? It might have happened. That, we, we, there's an interesting story behind this. Yeah, exclusives getting yanked here or there. That's that's the core of exclusive talk these days. You know, it's, it's a hotly debated, especially given the acquisition on deck for Microsoft. But now there's some evidence that Microsoft actually and actively snatched a big one away from Sony. Yeah, and as I literally just said, talking about Redfall, obviously the upcoming vampire shooter from Arcane, only available on Xbox and PC later this year, but apparently that was not always the case. Yeah, this came out in an interview with IGN France. Redfall director Harvey Smith, who I love by the way, always pretty uh, pretty honest in interviews, I'll say that, it's great, uh, explained that once Microsoft bought Bethesda in 2020, things changed pretty fast. Yeah, he said, and this is a quote, we got bought by Microsoft and that was a huge sea change. They said, no PlayStation 5, now we're gonna do Game Pass, Xbox, and PC. Ouch. Yeah, oof. So before the buyout, obviously, he said that Arcane was developing the game for all platforms. As Kotaku pointed out, though, that contradicted previous statements that Xbox boss Phil Spencer made to Kotaku before the Bethesda acquisition was announced. Yeah, it's, it's starting to get nitpicky a little bit. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. At the time, Spencer said that the Bethesda acquisition, quote, was not done to take games away from another player base like that. Yeah, he kind of doubled down saying, nowhere in the documentation that we put together was how do we keep other players from playing these games? We want more people to be able to play games, not fewer people to be able to play games. So very much the, we want everybody to play everything Phil. Yeah. Technically, the, neither of those statements, like they could still technically be true. Well, whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> very lawyered statement. Yes, yeah, Phil Spencer does this. He says very specific things in a very particular way because yep. uh, he knows he, he might get nailed on it years later. So yeah, he's, he's good at that. It's interesting to see. So yeah, on the surface, this, would seem to completely affirm Sony's fears that if Microsoft were allowed to acquire Activision Blizzard, they would then take away big time franchises like Call of Duty and make them exclusive. Of course they will. That's why they're anyway. <laughs> yeah, they're not bought. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the point. Everybody has to dance around it. And so anyway. At any rate, though, Redfall, it is due out on May 2nd. Uh, next up, and this is awesome. Very excited for this. The Silent Hill 2 remake is close. Yeah, it's right around the corner. This comes from developer Bloober Team. They said the remake almost done. They're just waiting on Big Daddy Konami to decide on launch plans for the survival horror game. Bloober can flip games, man. They are fast. I love it. Bloober CEO Piotr Babieno said that the game is, quote, technically ready, adding, it does not mean that the game is finished, but we are close. However, the issue of release schedule lies with our partners. What the promotion will look like and when the title will debut is not directly in our hands. Yeah, they gotta make sure it's not, you know, what the competition's looking like. There's a lot of factors going in. Uh, the remake, of course, is done in Unreal Engine 5, features an over-the-shoulder camera. Bloober also rebuilding the combat system and some specific set pieces. The game is set to be released as a console exclusive for the PlayStation 5 as well as PC. Oh, and here I thought they wanted everybody to play everything. Maybe that's their decision. It might not be up to Sony. Maybe Bloober's just like, that's the lead platform. It's easiest to develop for. We'll just do that and not worry about it. Who's to say? Good point. Konami has said original creators such as art director Masahiro Ito and composer Akiro Yamaoka are closely involved in the project. So definitely looks like a good one. Yes, yes, I'm so excited. I played Layers of Fear and I was like, this is basically Silent Hill already. It has that sort of tumbling into your own internal demons that get visualized into the game kind of thing. Big allegories for very traumatic life experiences. It's great, it's great. I'm excited. That's also called high school, but yeah, yeah I'm excited to play a game about it. <laughs> they should make a high school trauma game. Yeah, Bully 2. <laughs> Speaking of great, this is weird. Didn't expect this one. GameStop posts its first profit in two years. So, hey, maybe the Diamond Hands were right all along. They were right. Uh, GameStop back on the right track. On Tuesday, it posted a quarterly profit for the first time in two years, ending the fiscal year on a high note. How did they do it? For the quarter that ended January 28th, they posted a profit of 48.2 million, and that's compared to a loss of 147.5 million a year ago. CNBC reports that the retailer has been working to get back to profitability. How did they do it? Um, cutting costs, mostly. Laying off, got it, all right. CEO Matt Furlong said on an investor's call that the company is going into 2023 with even more plans to cut excess costs. That includes European markets, where it's already begun to pull out of some countries. Yeah, they're also looking to bolster the, the business with higher margin categories. Uh, that means toys, pretty much. More? Some plus 
plushies. Yeah, those 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 lineup aisles are gonna get even more crowded. I guess everybody buys games digitally now, so you just go to GameStop for the physical vestige, which is just toys, collectibles, and, and Funko Pops, I guess. And the atmosphere of, of dads everywhere lining up to buy stuff for their kids. Accordingly, GameStop stock surged more than 40% after the news. And while its stock has a shadow from the heyday of 2021, last time we checked, it was trading at more than $23 a share. Meme lords are still out there in force, I guess. That's right. Got some dudes out there just not selling. I'm hold holding. All right, next up, Microsoft already working on a next-gen console. This one just started. It feels like it, but uh, we're a couple years into it. It's it's that, that post-pandemic brain haze that has yet to lift. Yeah. But yeah, we learned this thanks to documents filed with the U.S. Federal Trade Commission as part of the ongoing war between regulators and Microsoft's proposed acquisition of Activision Blizzard. God bless all these filings, too. We have learned this has been months of stories. Uh, so yeah, in a recent motion, lawyers for the FTC requested that Microsoft produce documentation relating to its 10th generation gaming system, and they even mentioned it by its code name. Oh, I bet it has a cool one, Razor Slice. <laughs> We just have to imagine that. But journalists noted that the internal code name appears to be about 15 characters, or maybe it's two words. Project Scorpio Venom Sting Death. That's that's way longer than 15 characters. So yeah, specifically the document says that RFP6 requests documents related to blank. The code name for Microsoft's next generation gaming ecosystem, blank, is a part of Microsoft's forward-looking strategy for its console, subscription, and cloud gaming businesses. That's all we know. And and while obviously every company has research and development going at all times, it does seem to be pretty early on in the generation to already be looking down the road. Microsoft has been doing that for the last, ever since Phil Spencer kind of hit. They've been a very like 20 year down the road kind of company building out Game Pass and cloud and all that stuff, so. Definitely taking the long view of things for sure. It's, it's starting to pay off, yeah. All right, let's do an extremely fast review. Okay, one thing about this game, I love it. Why is it called Raccoon City? It's such a scary game. It's such a scary franchise. And Raccoon City, it's a friend. It's like a Disney name almost. Come to Raccoon City. <laughs> Maybe back in the day, Capcom thought that a raccoon was the most American animal. Oh, maybe, or maybe they're just like terrifying in Japan. I don't know. Maybe. They got a weird thing with raccoons. They are kind of scary. You don't want a raccoon in your trash at 3 a.m. No, they hiss. They get up and they're like, ah. Yeah, that's scarier than a Resident Evil game. All right, well, this review was not extremely fast, but I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> Editing can do anything. That's right. All right, here are all the games that are coming out next week. First, we got Nine Years of Shadows. Fight to bring beautiful colors back to a handcrafted world of darkness and discover the story of Europa, a young warrior and her ghostly childhood companion, Apino. Nine Years of Shadows comes to the PC on March 27th. Crime Boss Rocket City. Crime Boss Rocket City is an organized crime game combining first person shooter action and turf wars. It's playable solo or with friends. Take on the role of Travis Bay a man with his sights set on becoming the new king of Rock A City, one crime at a time. It comes to PC March 28th. I'm really excited for that. That looks so goofy. They got so many like B and C listers and on down the list. It's great. Mwah. I can't wait. I can't wait. They got vanilla ice, man. What? Uh, what? Uh, what? Uh. Dum, 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 yeah, dum, dum, Michael dum, Madsen, Danny Trejo. Oh, they got a, they got man. a pretty good slam. They got Danny Danny Glover <laughs> for some reason. Perfect. I'm sold. And probably on the other end of the, the happiness and gleeful spectrum, The Last of Us. Experience the emotional storytelling and unforgettable characters in The Last of Us, winner of over 200 Game of the Year awards. Where do they put them all? The Last of Us Part 1 comes to PC on March 28th. I didn't write too much on it because it's it's The Last of Us. Everyone you know knows what it is. What it is yeah, yeah. You, don't, you don't need us to, to go over Sad it. dad. That's right. <laughs> right. Is there any other kind? Next up, Dredge is a single player fishing adventure with a sinister undercurrent. Sell your catch, upgrade your boat, and dredge the depths for long buried secrets. Explore a mysterious archipelago and discover why some things are best left forgotten. Comes to PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, Switch, PC, everything basically. March 30th. And next, we've got Ravenbound. Fear everything and nothing, for death brings you closer to victory in this challenge 
challenging open world action roguelike. As the vessel of an ancient power, you must use steel and skill to complete your mission in a dangerous fantasy world inspired by Scandinavian folklore. Ravenbound hits PC on March 30th. Saga of Sins is an expiatory action adventure which features a mystical storyline and a rewarding arcade gameplay. Transform into demonic creatures and fight the seven deadly sins. It comes to PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X and S, Switch, and PC March 30th. Expiatory. Actually, yeah, is that a word? I gotta look that up. Let's see here. Expiatory. Having power to atone for or offered by way of expiation <laughs> or appropriation. I hate those definitions that include the word. It's like, I don't know what expiate means. Okay. The act of making amends or reparation for guilt or wrongdoing. Atonement. Oh, okay. One saga's quest for atonement. Next, we got the Great War, Western Front. It's the definitive World War One strategy game. Play a deciding role in history with this real-time tactical experience as you take charge in the iconic Western Front from 1914 to 1919. Pick your faction and lead your forces to victory. Pre-order now to receive three days early access. The Great War Western Front comes to PC on March 30th. Total Tank Generals. Every war has its generals. Take command of an army during World War II and lead them to victory. Strategize your way through many scenarios and real historical military campaigns of past generals. Comes to PC March 30th. Finally, Troublemaker. Grab a backpack, boxing tape, and focus on what high school is all about. Beating the ever-loving crap out of one another. Yeah, I had moments like this. Troublemaker blends favorite action-adventure beat-em-up elements from the strongest traditions in the genre. Troublemaker comes out on PC on March 31st. That is all the news we've got for you this week, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. But first up, Lawrence has some patrons we have to thank. That's right. I got some very special patrons here. Normally we sprinkle these out a bit, but the way episodes landed in March landed a little weird, but you know who didn't land weird? Redden003, Jared Watkins, Sketchy on Patreon, Gypsy Nova, Carl Rogers, Docs360, Cash Putnam, Maurice Thompson, UESC Battleroid, and Embers 87 Thank you all very much for being extra special. Yeah, you're the best. We love you. All right. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye.